Representations Theory of Finite Groups, Lecture 2, Representations and Modules. Before we can define the notion of representation, let us recall our setup. So during this course, we work over the field C of complex numbers. Unless stated otherwise, all vector spaces which we consider are going to be complex vector spaces of finite dimension. Also, unless stated otherwise, a group is a finite group. And in particular, we will use G as a default notation for a finite group. So let G be a finite group and V a finite dimensional complex vector space. Then we have the group GLV of all invertible linear transformations of V. So the group GLV is not a finite group anymore. Definition. A representation of G on V is a group homomorphism phi from G to GL of V. There is an alternative terminology used in this context, and this is a terminology of modules and linear group actions. So what are modules? So if G acts on V by linear transformations, then we say that V has a structure of a G module. So put shortly, a G module is a linear action of a group on a vector space. Given the representation phi from G to G L of V, consider the following map. Take the pair G is an element in G and V is an element in V. And send this map to the following element in V. So we take the linear operator phi of G, this is a linear operator on V, and we apply it to the vector V the outcome will be an element in V. So this defines an action of G on V by linear operators. In other words, this defines on V the structure of a G module. Vice versa, given a G module structure on V, the map which assigns to an element G in V, the transformation of V given by acting with the element G is a representation of G. So in other words, representations are modules and modules are representations. So these terms are essentially the same. So we will mostly use in the course the module notation and terminology because simply it is shorter. Here are some examples. Any group G acts on any vector space V while the trivial action where each element of G acts as the identity transformation of V. Example two, the two-dimensional complex vector space has the natural structure of a module over the dihedral group D2N given as follows. So we take the natural defining linear action of D2N on R square and extend the scalars from real to complex numbers. Example three, let G be a group acting on a finite set M. Consider the formal vector space in which the elements of M form a basis. Then the usual action of G on M gives rise to a linear action of G on this vector space. And so this produces a G-module structure on C of M, which is called the linearization of the original G action. Example four, the linearization of the natural action of G on itself by left multiplication is called the left regular representation of G or the left regular module over G. Example five, the linearization of the natural action of the symmetric group Sn on the set 1, 2, 3, and so on up to n is called the natural representation of Sn. Example 6. If H is a subgroup of G, then G acts on the set G modulo H of cosets of G modulo H in the following way. So we take an element G and apply it to the coset FH, producing the coset GF times H. So the linearization of this action is called the coset representation of G modulo H.
So we have now defined modules. Let us now define morphisms between modules. Let phi and psi be two representations of G. So phi is a homomorphism from G to GL of V, and psi is a homomorphism from G to GL of W. A linear map capital phi from V to W is called a homomorphism of these two representations, provided that for any element G in G and any element V in V, we have the following equality. If we apply capital phi to the element phi of G applied to V, we should get the same thing as if we apply psi of G to the element capital phi of V. In other words, the following diagram should commute for all elements G in G. So here in this diagram, we can start with V, apply the linear transformation little phi of G, and then apply the capital phi. Alternatively, we can first apply the capital phi and then apply the linear transformation psi of G of the vector space W. So this diagram should commute for any G in G. It is important to note that the map phi does not depend on the choice of the small element G in G. It should work for all G at the same time. And it's a nice exercise to formulate the corresponding notion in the terminology of G modules. Here are some examples. For any G module V, the identity map on V is a homomorphism from V to V. This is fairly obvious. Example 2, for any G modules V and W, the zero map, which sends all elements in V to the zero vector in W, is a homomorphism from V to W. Example 3, let W be a G module and small w be a vector in W. Consider the left regular G module V. So this is linearization of the action of G on itself by left multiplication. Consider the unique linear map capital Phi from C of G from this left regular module to W defined as follows. So the action of the capital Phi on the element G, so this is a basis element of C of G, the image of the element little g in G under capital Phi is by definition the element G applied to W. So W is our fixed vector in W. So this uniquely defines a linear map because linear maps uh, are definable on the basis. And the claim is that this Phi is a homomorphism of G modules. We will prove it in a minute. Once again, I want to emphasize that the linear map capital Phi is well defined because we have defined how it acts on the basis elements of the domain. So proof, let us now check that this is a homomorphism of G modules. Let G and H be elements in G. So then capital Phi applied to G of H. So the action of G on H is just a left multiplication. So it's the same as capital Phi applied to GH. So by definition, this is GH applied to W. The other way around, if we try to act by G on the image of H under Phi, so Phi of H is by definition H of W, and if we act by G on H of W, we get GH of W, which is the same as in the previous line. So this proves our claim. Now we can talk about the category of representations. Let U, V, and W be G modules. Phi from U to V is a G module homomorphism, and Psi from V to W is a G module homomorphism. Then the composition Psi after Phi is a G module homomorphism from U to W. So let us prove this lemma. Let G be in G, and U an element in U. Then let us try to compute the image of G of U under the composition of Psi after Phi. So by, by the definition of the composition, 
This is equal to psi of phi of g of u. Now phi is a homomorphism of g modules, so we can move g to the left. So we get psi of g of phi of u. But psi is also a homomorphism of modules, so we can move g to the left again, past psi. So we get g of psi of phi of u. And again, using the definition of the composition, this is the same as g of psi after phi applied to u, which exactly proves the claim of our lemma. Consequence, all g modules together with all homomorphisms of g modules form a category. And this category is denoted sometimes rep of g, sometimes rep sub k of g, if we work over some field k, if one wants to specify this field, or sometimes g mod, where m is capital if we talk about all modules. For finite dimensional modules, the standard notation is g mod, where m is a small letter. And then let us recall the further usual terminology. Endomorphisms are homomorphisms from a module to itself, and automorphisms are invertible endomorphisms. We will often use these words in the course. Now let us talk about submodules. Let V be a G module. A subspace of V is called a submodule, provided that it is stable under the action of G. In other words, for any G in G and for any W from the subspace, applying G to W produces an element in this subspace. So, in other words, a submodule is a subspace invariant under the action of G. Note, any submodule of a module inherits from V the structure of a G module by restriction. And the inclusion map from V to W is obviously a homomorphism of G modules. Here are some examples. The module itself is a submodule of itself. So V is a submodule of V for any module V in G mod. Also, zero is a submodule of any module. So this is because the elements of G act by linear operators, and linear operators always preserve zero. Here is this, another example, less trivial. Consider the left regular G module, C of G. Let W be the element in this module given by the sum of all elements G in G. And let capital W be the linear span of this little w. So the claim is that W is a submodule of the left regular G module. Proof? So we need to prove that for any element h in G, h acting on this element little w gives us an element in the capital W. So we need to compute h of w. So by definition, this is h applied to the sum of all elements in G. Since the action is linear, we can move h inside the summation. So this is the sum over all G in G, h G. But since we are in the group, left multiplication is, induces a permutation of group elements, so this is the same as just the sum of all elements G in G, which is exactly the element W, which belongs to the capital W. So the crucial point in this computation was the fact that the left multiplication with the group element is a bijection from G to G. Let us now talk about kernel and image. Let V and W be G modules. So we will denote by home sub G from V to W the set of all G module homomorphisms from V to W. So in other words, this is the morphism set in the category G mod from V to W. So let phi be a G module homomorphism from V to W. The set kernel of phi, which is the set of all vectors in V, which ascend to zero by phi, 
So this set is a subspace of V. Lemma care of phi is actually a submodule of V. Proof for any V in care of phi and any G in G, if we apply phi to G of V, then we can use that phi is a homomorphism of G modules, so we can commute phi and G, and then we get G of phi of V, but V is in the kernel, so phi of V is zero. So we get G of zero, and G is a linear operator, so G of zero is equal to zero. And this proves our lemma. Similarly, we can consider the set M of phi, which is the set of all vectors in W of the form phi of V, where V is an element in V. And we know that this set is a subspace of W. Claim this set is actually a submodule of W. Proof. Again, for an element V in M of phi and for G in G, applying G to phi of V and using that phi is a homomorphism of G module, so we can now commute G and phi, we get phi of G of V, which is manifestly an element in M of phi. Here are some examples. Example one, if V is a submodule of W, then the kernel of the natural inclusion of V in W is zero, because it's an inclusion, so it's injective. And the image of this natural inclusion is exactly V. Example two, let V be the left regular module over G, and let W be the submodule of this left regular module given by the linear span of the sum of all elements little g in big G. Then the map phi from the left regular module to this w, given by phi of g is equal to w for any g in g, is a homomorphism of g modules. Well, we know that h of w is equal to w for any h in g, and therefore h applied to phi of f is equal to h of w, which is w, which is phi of h of f, which is phi of hf. So this map is a homomorphism of G modules. Clearly phi is surjective because the module w is one dimensional and phi covers the basis of this module. So the image of phi coincides with w. And the kernel of phi is generated by all elements in the left regular module, which are mapped to zero. The most obvious elements which are mapped to zero are the differences between different elements in G. So then it follows that the kernel of phi has a basis E minus G, where G is a non-identity element in G, because this set of elements has dimension, the cardinality of g minus 1, and this is exactly the dimension of the kernel of phi. Let us now talk about quotients. Let v be a g module and w a submodule of v. Then we have the quotient space v modulo w, and the claim is that this quotient space has the natural structure of a g module given as follows. So if we take an element G in the group G and apply it to the coset V plus W, we get the coset G applied to V plus W. Why is it true? So this follows from the definitions because W is invariant under the action of G in G. So for example, here is a check that this action is well defined. So if you take another representative in the same coset, Another representative means that it has a form V plus W plus capital W, where small w is some element in W. So if we apply G to this new presentation of the same coset, so by definition, we will get G applied to V plus W plus capital W. But G is a linear map, so G applied to V plus W is G of V plus G of W. And W is 
invariant under the action of g. So g of w belongs to w, so we can move it together and get g of v plus w. The same answer as here. And validity of all axioms for the G-module structure is inherited from the corresponding axioms on the G-module V. And V modulo W is called the quotient of V modulo W. So it is a G-module. Here are some examples. Example 1. If we take any module and factor out the zero submodule, we will get our module back. Example 2, if we take any module and factor out the module itself, then we will get the zero vector space, so we get the zero module for G. Example 3, consider the defining or the natural 3 module V given by the linearization of the natural action of S3 on the set 1, 2, and 3. Then the linear span of the vector 1 plus 2 plus 3 is a submodule of V. Why? Because if you take any element in S3, it will just permute the element in this linear combination, leaving the linear combination intact. So this is a trivial submodule of the module V. And the quotient V modulo W has the obvious basis given by 1 minus 2 and 2 minus 3, because these two elements give us a complement to 1 plus 2 plus 3 in the vector space V. So now we can further compute the action of all elements in S3 in this basis, 1 minus 2 and 2 minus 3, of this quotient module. So the identity, of course, acts as the identity. The transposition 1 and 2 acts as the following matrix. So 1 and 2 swaps 1 and 2. So 1 minus 2 will be sent to 2 minus 1, which is minus 1 minus 2. So we will get coefficients minus 1 and 0 in this basis. 2 minus 3 will be sent to 1 minus 3, which is 1 minus 2 plus 2 minus 3. So we have 1, 1 here. Similarly, the transposition 2 and 3 sends 1 minus 2 to 1 minus 3, 1, 1. And it sends 2 minus 3 to 3 minus 2, 0, minus 1. The transposition 1 and 3 sends 1 minus 2 to 3 minus 2, 0, minus 1. And it sends 2 minus 3 to 2 minus 1, minus 0, 1. Next. The 3 cycle 1 to 3, it sends 1 minus 2 to 2 minus 3. The coefficients are 0 and 1. And it sends 2 minus 3 to 3 minus 1. And 3 minus 1 has in this basis the coordinates minus 1 and minus 1. And finally, similar computation 1, 3, 2 gives us the matrix with first column minus 1, minus 1, and the second column 1 and 0. So this is how you compute the action of the elements in the quotient module. Let us now formulate the first isomorphism theorem. Let V and W be two G modules and phi a G module homomorphism from V to W. Then the kernel of phi is a submodule of V. The image of phi is a submodule of W. And the quotient of V modulo the kernel of phi is isomorphic to the image of phi in the category G mod. So claims one and two we have already seen. And to prove claim three, one simply notes that we have the usual vector space isomorphism, so the first isomorphism theorem for vector spaces. So V modulo kernel of phi is isomorphic to the image of phi. And this isomorphism is given by sending the coset V plus kernel of phi to the element phi of V. And we claim that this isomorphism of vector spaces is actually a homomorphism of G modules. Indeed, if we apply G to the coset V plus kernel of phi, then by definition we get G of V plus kernel of phi. So by the definition of our map, 
this is mapped to phi of g of v. But phi is a homomorphism of g modules, so this is equal to g of phi of v, and this is exactly what we need to prove our claim. Let us now talk about the group algebra. Consider the formal vector space C of G with bases consisting of all elements of G. So the elements of this formal vector space are formal linear combinations of the elements in the group G with complex coefficients. Let's denote them alpha of G, the coefficient at G. Define a multiplication on this vector space by extending the group operation on G via bilinearity. So if you take a formal linear combination of elements in G with coefficients alpha G and want to multiply it with a formal linear combination of elements in G with coefficients beta H, the outcome will be a formal linear combination of elements X in G with coefficients given by the sum of all possible products alpha G times beta H where G and H are elements in G, such that their product in G is equal to X. And this defines on this formal vector space the structure of an associative and unital algebra. The unit will be just the identity element of the group. And this is usually called the group algebra of G over our field C of complex numbers. So next, we want to compare G modules versus the modules over the corresponding group algebra. So note that G is a subgroup of the multiplicative monoid formed by this group algebra. So therefore, any module over the group algebra can be restricted to G. So it's also a G module by restriction. Moreover, any G module extends uniquely to a module over the group algebra by linearity. So any G is represented by a linear operator on some vector space. If you have a linear combination of elements in G, which is an element of the group algebra, it acts as a linear combination of the corresponding linear operators. And since G forms a basis of C of G or generates it as an algebra, Homomorphisms of G modules and homomorphisms of CG modules coincide. So consequence, the categories of G modules and CG modules are isomorphic as categories. And this isomorphism restricts to an isomorphism between the categories G little mod and the category CG little mod. Let us now talk about matrix representations. Let G be a group and V and G module. Let us choose some basis, bold V, consisting of elements V1, V2, and so on, Vn, in the vector space V. In this basis, the linear action of each element G on V is represented by an n times n complex matrix. Let's call it M sub G. And the map G goes to M sub G is a group homomorphism from G to the group of all invertible n times n matrices with complex coefficients. This is usually called the matrix representation of G associated with our choice of a basis in the G module V. Note that if we choose a different basis, then we will usually get a different matrix representation of G. Here are some examples. Example one. If G acts trivially on V, in other words, any element in G acts as the identity map on V, then in any basis of V, the action of any element in G is given by the identity matrix. The identity linear operator has the identity matrix in any basis. Example two, the natural representation of S2, that is the linearization of the natural action of S2 on 1, 2, has the obvious basis consisting of elements 1 and 2. And in this basis, the action of the identity element is given by the identity matrix, and the action of the transposition 1, 2 is given by the following matrix. First column is 0, 1, and the second one is 1, 0. 
So this is a matrix which swaps the first and the second basis vectors. However, we can have a different basis in the same vector space, let's say given by the elements 1 plus 2 and 1 minus 2. So in this basis, the action of the identity is again given by the identity matrix, but the action of the transposition 1, 2 is now given by the diagonal matrix with 1 and minus 1 on the diagonal. So this is because 1, 2 applied to 1 plus 2 gives you 1 plus 2. So the first column should be 1, 0, while 1, 2 applied to 1 minus 2 gives you 2 minus 1, so which is minus 1 minus 2. So the second column should be 0 and minus 1. Let us now discuss isomorphisms of representations in terms of change of basis. Let V be a G module. Let us choose a basis V in V and a different basis W in V. And let T be the transformation matrix from V to W. So this is an invertible matrix. So for G in G, denote by G sub V and G sub W, the matrices of the action of G and V in these bases V and W respectively. So by the base change formula, for any G in G, we have that T after G sub V is equal to G sub W after T. In other words, we can view T as an isomorphism from the matrix representation corresponding to our choice V of the basis in V to the matrix representation corresponding to the different choice W of the basis in the same vector space V. Next, let us discuss that homomorphisms of modules form a linear space. So let V and W be G modules and consider the set of all G module homomorphisms from V to W. So this set, by definition, is a subset of the set of all linear maps from V to W. And we know that the later set has the natural structure of a vector space given as follows. So if we take two linear maps alpha and beta from V to W, then the sum alpha plus beta applied to an element V in V is by definition alpha of V plus beta of V. Similarly, if you take a linear map alpha from V to W and a complex scalar lambda, then lambda alpha applied to V is by definition lambda times alpha of V. So please note that this plus is the addition in the vector space of all linear maps, while this plus is addition in W. Similarly, lambda times alpha, so this is multiplication with the scalar inside home CVW. Lambda times alpha of V, this is multiplication with a scalar in the vector space W. Lemma, if phi and psi are two G homomorphisms from V to W, and if lambda is in C, then both phi plus psi, this is a linear map, and the linear map lambda phi, both these linear maps are actually G module homomorphisms from V to W. So let us check the first claim and the second claim is similar. So for any element V in V and any element G in G, so if we apply psi plus phi to the element G of V, then by definition this is psi applied to G of V plus phi applied to G of V. Since both psi and phi are homomorphisms, we can commute them with the element G to get G of psi of V plus G of phi of V. Since G is linear, this is equal to G of psi of V plus phi of V. And we can again use the definition of the sum of linear maps to get that this is equal to G applied to psi plus phi applied to V. And this checks that phi plus psi is actually 
a G homomorphism from V to W. So consequently, the set of all G homomorphism from V to W is actually a subspace of the linear space of all linear maps from V to W. Finally, let us discuss direct sums of G modules. Let V and W be G modules. Then we can consider the vector space V plus W, which consists of all pairs V, W, where V is in V and W in W, where addition and multiplication with scalars is defined component-wise. For G in G and the pair V, W in the direct sum, define the action of G on this pair component-wise. And then it is clear that this defines on the direct sum V plus W, the structure of the G module. This is usually called the direct sum of V and W. Please note that the natural projection map from the direct sum onto the first component is a homomorphism of G modules. Similarly, the natural projection map onto the second component is a homomorphism of G modules. The natural inclusion map from the first component into the direct sum is a homomorphism of G modules. And the natural inclusion map from the second component into the direct sum is a homomorphism of G modules. So let us finish with some problems and questions. Question number one, formulate the notion of homomorphism using the terminology of G modules. Question two, let G act on a finite set M. Prove that the sum of all elements in M generates a one-dimensional submodule in the linearization of this action. Question three, determine the kernel of the homomorphism from the regular S3 module to the natural S3 module, which sends the identity element in the regular S3 module to the element one in the natural S3 module. Question four, consider the dihedral group D2 times five. Choose some basis in R2 and compute the matrix representation of D2 times phi associated with this choice of basis in the defining representation. And question five, check with all details that the definition of the action of G on the direct sum of two G modules defines on this direct sum the structure of a G module. Thank you very much and see you next time.